There's been a lot of projects done by the current government, which is led by um, Nana Akufuado. And in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the top 10, the top 10 on my list when it comes to um, the Greater Accra region. And I'm talking about infrastructure projects, not policies or initiatives. So this top 10 list is not following in any particular order or any particular sequence. So the first on my list, this is the new Bank of Ghana headquarters, officially known as the Bank Square. It is currently the tallest building in Ghana with 25 stories. It has a four-story car parking facility, two-level basements, an auditorium, and many others. The building has incorporated sustainable design concepts such as energy conservation, water conservation, material selection, recycling, and reuse of water. I mean liquid and solid waste. It's one of the few buildings in the country which is self-reliant and self-sufficient. What I mean by this is that the building has an energy farm and the energy farm powers the entire building so the building does not need power from the national grid. So the next on my list is the Kaswa Winiba road expansion or upgrade. So the road as it is is um, in single lanes so single lane two and single lane from but the upgrade of this particular road um, when done would see the road having two or dual carriage so two here two there moving at the same time later there will be a number of um, pedestrian foot bridges to crack down on the various um, pedestrian knockdowns that happen um, on this particular side of town and also to limit or cut down the travel times between central region and then the greater Accra or possibly Accra to Cape Coast um, because if you've used this route before, you can attest to the fact that the traffic situations here can be sometimes very, very much unbearable. So this project seeks to bring some relief to commuters that use this particular stretch. So the next on my list is the Ofankos One Road Expansion Project. So the road as it is um, from the Pokwasi Interchange is an eight-lane um, road. But after this project is going to be, or this project seeks to expand it from an 8-lane to a 10-lane project all the way from Pokwase to Enswam Junction. And this will bring some kind of smooth, seamless tram, tram, transportation of freight and passengers on this particular section of the route. One thing that is worthy of taking note is that there's been a construction of a railway um, bridge. So th there was already an existing bridge, but this bridge has been expanded in terms of weight, height and size. And now I can confidently or boldly say <clears throat> it's a, it will be able to accommodate two railway lines where two trains are moving, one moving to and get from. So it's kind of modernized now and again, um, one thing that is hindering the project is um, the number of lost use that has hit this project. Um, because there are some power lines in between the jurisdiction or the parameters where the road is supposed to take place. There's been, there are lost use on people that have their lands claimed and being used for the road and settlement issues, a whole lot of laws used that um, is one of the things or are some of the things that is hindering the progress of this project. But all the same, um, the work is progressing steadily, uh, although it should have gone beyond where it is now, but um, that notwithstanding, it's still, it's still progressing steadily. And this road or routes is a very important one, it plays a very important role in the country because it links the country's capital Accra to the country's second capital, which is Kumase, and it goes also from there to um, the neighboring regions, um, the Bonahafo region. It, this same route is what you will use if you are heading from Accra to the country, the northern part of the country. So it's a very um, important route when it comes to the nation's economy. So once this is um, upgraded, the route is upgraded, upgraded, it's going to have a ripple, a ripple chain of effects, I mean positive effects on the people that use it, the people that live around the route. So the next on my list is Botemans Sports Complex. So the Botemans Sports Complex, uh, the whole uh, the idea about constructing the Botemans Sports Complex came up when Ghana won the bid to host the 2023 All-African Games. So as part of the plan to construct the sports complex, there was plans to also construct a 50,000 Olympic Stadium for the All-African Games. But unfortunately it didn't happen, but we were made to know that it was because of COVID-related issues. And this has been scheduled or year marked for the phase two of this project. We hope it happens. So the next on my list is the Kwame Nkrumah National Park. So this site where the park is situated used to be a former British polo grounds. And symbolically, this was the same place Osage Fodosa Kwame Nkrumah stood to declare Ghana's independence. 
So this is the grounds he stood to make the famous declaration Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. The mausoleum here at the park is the final resting place of Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president, and her wife, Fatia Nkrumah. And the mausoleum from top to down is clad in Italian marble. And the top of the mausoleum has a black star signifying unity. So things to look out for in the park is a bronze statue of Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah with his hand up pointing forward, symbolizing forwardness. Another thing to look out for at the park is the mausoleum. That's where the mortal remains of the first president, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and her wife, Fatia Nkrumah. Ah. And there's a museum behind the mausoleum. That's where his personal belongings and things he used to use in his office during his presidency and some publications by him. So in case you are confused with what a mausoleum and a museum means, so a mausoleum is a house or a structure that houses a tomb or a mortal remains of a person. And a museum is a place where several artifacts are kept for historical purposes or any other purpose. And within the park, there's also a garden where there are several trees that have been planted by leaders, world leaders across the globe. Um, there's a tree that, that has been planted by, or that was planted by Nelson Mandela. There's even a tree that was planted by the current president, Anna Ekufuado, during the commission. So the park was built in 1991 and was opened in 1992 by Jerry John Rollins. And for about three decades now, the park hadn't seen any renovation. So the current president got it renovated and commissioned it on 4th July 2024. So the next on my list is the Legon Sports Stadium. So the project or the idea to build a stadium befitting the university for the University of Ghana started way back in 1976, but it wasn't started until about 2004. So the construction started in 2004 and it was interrupted in 2009 when the Get Fund stopped funding the project. So although the project was halted in 2009, at the time there had been the construction of the Tartan track, the stands had been built and Tartan running track was also laid. But the facility was not fully completed or officially inaugurated. So nothing happened again from 2009 until 2018 when Ghana won the hosting right to host the 2023 All African Games in Accra. So as I've mentioned earlier, this came with a plan to build a 50,000 capacity stadium at the Botevan Sports Complex. But this plan was hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic and so the government had to improvise the Legon Sports Stadium. At the time, it had been built to an extent and all they needed to do was to continue from where the previous work was left off. So this got the facility fully completed and it became the main venue for the 13th All-African Games. So the facility can boast of training athletics track, which is next to the stadium, and other university sports facilities including a swimming pool, and also a rugby field, which is not far away from the main stadium. The stadium is a multi-purpose stadium and has an eight-lane track, nine on the main street, Tartan Athletics track. The running track is surrounded by stands for spectators. First row of ground stands are raised slightly above the ground and are located at some distance from the track. The stands are equipped with plastic seats and has a capacity of 10,000 spectators. It has floodlights provided by four external masts built within the stadium and a scoreboard at the southern stand. So the next on my list is the Flower Pot Interchange. The Flower Pot Interchange is an 802 meter dual carriage flyover built to take care of traffic from Spain Test and its enclave to East Legon and Tema via the motorway and vice versa. Adorned with beautiful mural paintings to add to the aesthetics of the project. This project has already been commissioned and is in use at the moment as I'm speaking. So the next on my list is the DMU trains and the Tema to Impakadan rail system. This project saw the construction of a new standard gauge railway system from the Tema Harbour to Impakadan through or across the Volta Lake. And as it stands, it's the only railway which has been constructed over any water body in the country at the moment. And this project is part of a bigger master plan to build a railway from the Tama Harbour to transport passengers and freight all the way to Burkina Faso. You know Burkina Faso is a landlocked country. What I mean by this is they are not surrounded by any water body or any sea or ocean. So in terms of imports, they heavily depend on Ghana. So if we are able to construct this thousand kilometer railway from the port of Tema to Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso, this will bring a lot of economic income into the country. So that is the whole business idea behind this railway and it is being worked on progressively. So now it starts from Tema, Tema port to Mpakadan and then it will continue from there till it finally gets to Ouagadougou. 
So the next on my list is a STEM school located in East Legon here in Accra. So what does STEM even stand for? STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. So this is a school built with a purpose and intention to educate students with hands-on skills on science, technology, engineering and mathematics right from the very young age even before entering into the tertiary institution. And you'll be amazed what these kids benefiting from the STEM education are doing now. Just the other day, some students from one of the senior high schools constructed a solar-powered dialysis machine and there are other students from other schools also building drones and it tells you the impact the STEM education is having on this crop of or this generation of students. The next on the list is the La Paz footbridge. So this footbridge comes at a very crucial time and it seeks to end pedestrians knockdown on the N1 motorway. So the next on my list is the Pokwasi Interchange, the biggest in Ghana, the first of its kind in the West African sub-region, a fourth year interchange project which has come to eradicate a lot of the congestion that used to happen on this particular side of town. The flyover connects the north and south of Accra seamlessly via Pukwase. This same project also connects Ghana's capital Accra to its second capital Kumasi seamlessly. So the Pukwase interchange project was initiated by the previous government, the Mahamalek government. They started with the negotiations and signing of the grants for the project. And the Ekufado led government executed the project by cutting salt for it and also redesigning the project from a three-tier into a four-tier interchange, ensuring its completion and commissioning. This is how we love to see things in the country. For any developed nation, continuity is key. So when one government starts a project and the next government comes into power, he completes it for the betterment of the nation. So the next on my list is the Accra Marine Drive project. This project seeks to redevelop a 241-acre land into a waterfront and transform the capital city Accra into a world-class tourism enclave. The Marine Drive Accra project also seeks to provide essential infrastructure to support the country's developing cultural and creative industries. This project, when completed, will turn Accra into the new Dubai of Africa. Let me know down in the comment section your top 10 projects by this current government. Any other infrastructure projects you felt that you have added but I didn't add, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Maybe I might do a second video for that. But I believe today's video has been helpful, educative and insightful enough. If that's the case, like our video down below, share so other people can see, and as always, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.